you know, if we can lay down our expectations and just say, you know what, God, your agenda is our agenda over yeah. this holiday season and just see what he does. Thank you for joining us for the Blended Kingdom Families podcast. This podcast is for blended families, the people who love them, and anyone who just wants to improve their marriage and family relationships. BKF exists to break the cycle of divorce, equip marriages, and unite blended families with the truth of God's Word. It is our hope that today you will receive biblical guidance and practical resources that will bring unity and peace to create your thriving, healthy home. Let's jump in. Hey guys, it's Scott and Vanessa Martindale with Blended Kingdom Families. We're so glad that you're here with us today. And we are back again this week talking about Blended Home for the Holidays. It's a Mm -hmm. four-part series on your blended family traditions, all the things in the holiday season. But we also want to remind you guys of our book, Blended and Redeemed. It's out. You can order it on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles. Mm -hmm. You can even go to blendedandredeemed.com. We also have the study guide and pastoral guide for you. And if you're interested in starting a blended family group or a class at your church, please reach out to us at info at blendedkingdomfamilies.com. We'd love to send you a blended box um, that has everything in it that you would need to start that. Yeah. And guys, we're going to start diving into what it means on sharing your children during the holidays and maybe some challenging things that go on with that. And also some opportunities to build bridges and to look at, you know, the traditions that you've, we talked about last week and establishing those again, kind of uh, paving the way for those to happen in seasons where, you know, you may be having adjustment every other holiday. Yeah. And one thing that I think can make that process easy, especially during the holidays and in in, in those transition seasons is, um, you know, just being upfront and honest. Yeah with your co-parent. Um, we always talk about communication and planning ahead as that helps prevent confusion. It can help prevent discord. And it really lays out a foundation of what your, um, of what your holiday plans can look like. And so, you know, um, you know, we know that in the holiday times too, this can also bring up some or resurface some feelings maybe from the past. And so, um, so Scott, why don't you dive a little into that and talk through that a little bit? Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of bridge the two, to two things you said. So the, the planning ahead part, this is the part that I think is really the part that people don't talk about is you look at your holiday and you go, okay, here's the holiday time. Uh, here's the off time. Here's my vacation time. And you really just kind of set those dates in and you just look at those and you really don't think of, okay, Oh, wait, by the way, when's the transition going to happen or when, yeah. when are the children going to be here? So the, the communication part early is a big reason to kind of evade or, you know, miss those times of getting angry later on. So what I'm saying is this, is if you plan ahead, the other parent can go, okay, now I remember, okay, this is when I have to arrange things. Because the worst thing that can happen is you have these plans made and all of a sudden you go, oh, they're not going to be here. Yeah. Or, oh, I have to be come back at this time, especially yeah. if you're traveling for the holidays. I know yeah. a lot of a lot of people travel to go see grandparents. So communication is key. And again, if you're not if those things are not laid out, then you're gonna see these resurfacing. Mm-hmm. It's like the holidays can bring up everything you've done wrong the entire year. Sure. It's like that's the key moment. That's the Super Bowl moment of like this is when it's gotta work. And if it doesn't work, mm-hmm. then everything you did all year long, that's gonna come up at that particular moment. Yeah. And I think um you know, obviously we have people who are listening and watching who Mm. they may have a very cordial co-parenting relationship and you get along and you are able to work with one another and that is Mm. fine and dandy. But then there are some of us who we we don't have the best relationship with Mm. our co-parent and we really have to stick to what our papers have laid out Mm -hmm. for us. Your, um, you know, court papers, divorce papers, whatever that looks like. And so Um, we always recommend that, uh, you know, like Scott said, at the beginning of the year, uh, Mm -hmm. we try to sit down with our co-parents or at least have a conversation of, Hey, this, don't forget, this is your Thanksgiving. This is our Christmas. This is our plan. We're still planning to pick him up on this day, drop him off. Just kind of given a brief overview. If we're going to be traveling, we always want to let them know that we're traveling in case something happens. Um, so still communicating that, but you know, if you're in that situation where you can't necessarily do that, you know, maybe it's that you rely on the apps and we've talked about this, Mm -hmm. like the family core, um, has an app, my family wizard. Those are things where you can also put those into your calendars in there so that your ex, um, your ex spouse, 
spouse or your co-parent yeah. can see that you have that on the schedule and it's already blocked off. Yeah. And I would also say, please remember that as the children age, as they get older, mm -hmm. plans have to be, you know, a little bit different. Sure. Um, I know that we're in a season where uh, Michael is 16 mm -hmm. and he has different schedules and he sure. has uh, athletics and all kinds of things going on. So as the children get older, you're going to need to really communicate as a family and as a blended families and go, hey, this is what's changing right now. Yeah. And I don't want anybody's feelings to get hurt because what, what can happen and what I think does happen a lot is as the child gets older, then communication kind of goes to them True. and they are in a situation where they don't want to disappoint. Right. So again, these holiday traditions and these holiday plans can be very stressful for kids sometimes. So sure. again, plan early, plan ahead, communicate it will alleviate a lot of those problems. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the other things that we have on here that I want to talk about is, you know, trying to include everyone. Mm. Um, I know that when we're making all our holiday plans, we try to include um, the other party or, you know, our ex and their family. I, you know, Michael's aunt lives here mm. in the DFW area. He's very close to her. And so we coordinate with her a lot and they want to see him as well. Yeah. Um, so we try to um, include everyone, whether it's our fa our extended family yeah. or if it's um, Michael's extended family. And mm -hmm. so we want to make sure that, um, you know, while he has that downtime during the holidays and he's off from school, he's able to see the family that he doesn't get to see as often. Yeah. And depending upon the way things are kind of laid out in your 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 pattern or your your papers or the divorce decree or all that stuff, again, you know, a lot of people alternate holidays. Sure. So again, this needs to be communicated. Yeah. <laughs> because a lot of people forget. You know, you just yeah. forget. You're like, oh my gosh, it's our our Thanksgiving. Yeah. And a lot of times when it's your holiday, you want to do something maybe extra special sure. during that time. Sure. So communication, alternating holidays. Um, another option is splitting the holiday break. Yeah. You know, a lot of times if people, you know, if they live close together, it's like, listen, we don't want to, you know, have one here and there. Yeah. Why don't we split this up? And and if you can communicate and you have that kind of relationship, it makes it so much easier for not only you, but also mm -hmm. for your children. Yeah. I know that we've done that in the past. Uh, you know, technically like one parent has one for, if it's an even year, yeah. odd number year, you know, the holidays flip flop back and forth. And I know multiple times uh, when we were supposed to have our son through the Christmas break, which includes Christmas Eve, yeah. Christmas day, you know, we would, because we live so close to his dad and stepmom, he would go on Christmas Eve, but come home late that night. And then we yeah. would do Christmas day together. And so just allowing, um, and, 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 and allowing to the, vo the kid child to have a, a voice in that understand if we have littles, we need to be the voice of reason, but our son is 16 and he's driving. And so, and for yeah. us, you know, we want him to be able to experience, um, the holidays, not only with our family, but with his other family to the fullest. And so, um, whenever we can come into agreement and we're all on the same page, and we've communicated that, um, you know, he, he mm -hmm. has the freedom to make that choice to go do that. Yeah. And I will tell you, it is a great opportunity to start building a relationship. Sure. If you don't have an amicable relationship, there, there's nothing better than that phone call that says, hey, listen, I think we can do this better mm -hmm. if we do it this way. Or would this work better for you guys if we did this kind of a, a split holiday and we said, hey, we're going over here this day and coming back yeah. so that we can all enjoy the holidays as uh, as families and enjoy those traditions together. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a great opportunity, and we're going to talk next week about kind of extending that olive branch and how the holidays really uh, highlight that opportunity to start building a relationship. Yeah, and I would say, too, just, just some things to keep in mind. I know a lot of times, um, especially as moms, we can be planners. Um, mm. I am a recovering perfectionist. <laughs> <laughs> and so I would get really upset after I had all these plans and I put all of this energy into our schedule and the holidays, and then they would just get blown up. Yeah. And so just and something that I had to realize was that it's just a day. Um, mm. and, and as our son has gotten older, for me, that is just become more of a reality. And it's, you know, just because our son isn't here on Thanksgiving day, doesn't mean that when he gets home a few days later, that we all can't sit down as a family and mm -hmm. be thankful and, you know, praise God and give him, um, you know, a glory together as we would on Thanksgiving day. And so yeah. just understanding that we can still do that on a different day if it's not on the exact day, or if our plans don't go according to the plan, 
you know, at the end of the day, you know, looking at my family and being like, my family is here. We're all together. We get to celebrate together. We can say what we're thankful for. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and the same thing with Christmas and, and I know little kids, they're really excited <laughs> about the presents, but understanding that, Hey guys, we're celebrating something more than that. We're celebrating yeah. the birth of our savior. And, um, and, and even if, if we don't get to open presents on Christmas day, that's not what it's about. Um, but still yeah. reserving that time, you know, when the other children or child gets home from their other family yeah. and doing that together and enjoying it together. Yeah. Or have multiple Christmases. You there know? you go. I mean, I, you know, I look at it like the little kids, like they want to open presents. Okay. Throw, you know, if you have a couple out there and be like, okay, this is our presents. Yeah. And then when, you know, for us, when Michael gets home, we're gonna have another Christmas. Yeah. So I love what you said about it's just a day um, because you can celebrate thanksgiving on Mm -hmm. any day Mm -hmm. you can celebrate christmas on any day um but the flip side of that is by having the flexibility imagine what that does for your children yeah so for us we're like you know it's okay yeah or um but imagine for your children they're like i don't have to miss these things as much as you don't you want them there they want to be there too they want to be in both places Mm -hmm. at the same time to celebrate the same thing. They really do. Mm -hmm. And so the more flexible you are, the more like, hey, we have room for all of this. We have room to do all this. We don't have to do it at noon on Thanksgiving day. Right. We can do it the day before or three days later. Yeah. I think laying down that expectation to, um, you know, we can go into the holidays and Mm -hmm. You know, especially when you have family coming into town and you're trying Mm -hmm. to coordinate all these things, you want to have an expectation that it goes from A to Z perfectly. And it's Mm. and it's not going to do that. (laughs) So I think, you know, if we can lay down our expectations and just say, you know what, God, your agenda is our agenda over this holiday season and just see what he does. Um and just be prayerful about it. You guys like be prayerful about the holiday season and, and going into it. And maybe last year you didn't have a good holiday season. You know, maybe there was a lot of conflict that was going on. Maybe you and your stepchild weren't getting along, but just being prayerful um, and prepare, not only preparing your heart, but asking God to prepare the hearts within your family so that you guys um, can enjoy that and find peace in those times. Yeah. <sighs> The truth of it is, is holiday seasons are heightened emotional seasons. Mm-hmm. They are because, um, you know, you, 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 you kind of plan for this. It's kind of a vacation time. You've worked all year. Maybe you've, you've really, you know, focused on, you know, I'm, I'm really planning to give this gift or, um, Hey, all this family's coming in town. So this heightened emotional season, yeah. uh, where you have all this sometimes anxiety and then you realize you're supposed to be resting. Yeah. Uh, and then it makes it even worse. Yeah. I would say in the blended family, this concept that we're, we really try to work so hard on, don't let Satan get a foothold into an opportunity that can be used to build uh, an amazing bond with your blended family, not only in your own traditions, but also in the other home. And I just cannot overstate that enough. It's just such a good opportunity to do that because, again, nobody wants to miss out. So the first one that says, let's do it this way and let's try to work together, it's just going to pave a road that is so much better. Absolutely. And we just want to leave you guys with some questions to maybe ask yourself, um, you know, maybe uh, if you look back on the last couple of years, maybe this is your first um, holiday season as a blended family, just some things to think about Mm. of how you would want to do things moving forward or how maybe you can change some things that haven't been going Mm. so well over the last couple of years. And one of them is what have you learned over the years about sharing your child? What's a good thing that has resulted from sharing your child? And what's one experience and sharing that you wish you could do over. Mm. And so I think a lot of times we get into situations and we have to, and if we have the right posture where we can pause and say, okay, God, what are you wanting to teach me through this? Whether it's been a good experience or a bad experience, you know, what is it that you want to teach me in this? What is it that you want to show me about about my heart? What it, What is it that you want to show me about my blended family? Maybe it's the relationship with your co-parent and ex-spouse. And I think um, when we can just sit with the Lord um, and just ask simple questions like this and really examine our heart, um, I think we can get fresh revelation and ideas about where we can go mm-hmm. with sharing our children in the holidays and in that tra- transition and how we, how it starts with us and we can make that better for mm-hmm. them, for our blended family, and even mm-hmm. extend the olive branch to our ex-spouse. 
Yeah. No, I think that's absolutely. And I, I know as we plan for the holiday season and we look at this with so much anticipation, we're hoping that this just gives you kind of little nuggets of like, let me think about this a little bit more. Let me see if I can do this a little bit better than we did last year. Yeah. Um, and I know that it's just going to be a, a, a really blessed season. Guys, we are wrapping this one up. And next week, we're going to talk about kind of coping with transitions. And I know as, tra- yeah. as children transition, there's there are things there. And yeah. we're, we're going we're gonna to dive into those. So we hope you come back. Join us next week. Again, if you haven't already, take an opportunity, like, share, comment. We would love to, to hear your thoughts on the podcast. So leave us a review if you want to. We would love to get that feedback. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Be blessed in all that you do. Hey guys, so glad you were here with us today and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And you can find more resources from Blended Kingdom Families at blendedkingdomfamilies.com. Join us again next time as we hang out with more amazing podcast guests. And remember, nothing will be impossible with God.